welcome back here to my channel of an everyday life of an SP. If you're new to my channel, I'm SP Answers All or I'm known as SP on the given as a short form of my channel name, so to speak. So I welcome you new beast to my channel. Basically, I'm all about talking about my condition, taking you all on a journey with Asperger's syndrome and the like, as well as basically sharing some mental health and awareness kind of videos versus everything else that's health related. So that hopefully we can just learn and educate from each other and hopefully me being the voice of certain things that comes up in my life that maybe people can just click on and relate to one way or another. I also do another separate channel which is the Beauty From Ashes channel even though at this current time with this Beauty From Ashes channel it's in like I said so many times in a library now playlistings. This covers basically everyday you know problems that we go through and hopefully some of these pills of wisdom knowledge and that based on my experiences and training versus whatever else that comes up will be of value use or a tool for you to share with your family friends and whatever just bear in mind despite what i'm doing right now and the way of my day of presenting to you or you know giving you tips and advice or anything like that i am no medical expert i'm just a normal everyday joe blogs that goes through my everyday life journey with this Vegeta syndrome and the like, basically just sharing and being open with you as much as possible, just to invite you into my life, this sort of thing. And it's would be good if there's no judgmentality on how I go about my life and that. And also with some of the stuff that I may be giving you, the management side of things, be it you know through those everyday conditions on my own versus some other ones that are clearly being addressed right now. He say of the learning disabilities, you know. If it doesn't fit for you for the tips and advice versus the you know the management side of things, you know, you can always try some of the tips step by step as some of it is of my videos are step by step anyway, easy to follow hopefully. But if some of it doesn't work, just keep trying one of them, you know, because like I said, some of it may be beneficial to me and not for you and vice versa. Some of the things you may do in your private life of trying to manage your way of living be it whatever everyday condition you have it should be of use to others so feel free to actually maybe comment below if it's related to the video of what i bring out so in all for the do basically also just to give you the heads up just get a second opinion in or what have you or a proper diagnosis of certain things be it whatever it may be here's an example as i said so many times before for the add and the other learning disabilities because you can't stop there just thinking just the one clinical you know doctor saying oh you've got this because as as i said so many times before sometimes it can be hard to actually know the signs and symptoms until we actually do our own homework maybe and actually you know go about finding out the real you know deal what it is and whatnot so and all for the do guys before i run out of time if you're new to my channel basically i'm doing the learning disability series and as i said so many times before I humbly apologize in advance that some of it may be missing at this point of time, but don't worry about it. I mean, some of it is up there, hopefully, and it's been of value to you to actually understand better. So that goes for just understanding me as a person, as a whole, regardless of the diagnostics labels of his speech syndrome and the life of what I've got under me. Basically, I just want this channel to be as friendly as possible and actually be free from judgmentality calls versus, you know, misunderstanding the that because I know what it's like to be misunderstood and whatnot. And it's just like I know it's a cool world out there with people just misjudge us and stuff just because, you know, we're different. People give us a hard time. And yeah, it just breaks my heart to the point that, you know, why why do it in the first place you know but like someone said to me you need to balance out the negativity versus the positivity you're going to have a bit of negativity somewhere along the way in the world but it's not you it shouldn't always have to be always about the negativity even though yes i know it's a free way balance 50 50 split having it but then you know it's all about just basically have for my elderly but anyway and further ado basically this one's all about the how to right um how to help a dyslexic adult some of us will also evolve over for children as well with dyslexia so this one basically is going to be broken down into three sections so bear with me on this and more to, of the how to's will be used as hopefully like an instruction manual or guide or whatever you want to call it to actually share among your family and friends so let's begin this so this one is part one 
of the of it of this helping to how to help a dyslexic adult from what I can recall after being diagnosed a little earlier on when I was a child before they basically said my actual diagnosis what it is. So in all further ado, how to help a dyslexic adult. Let's begin it. As we know, dyslexia, like many other learning disabilities, can be a lifelong learning disability. You know, you can have it for life, so to speak. Dyslexia children, however, can become dyslexic adults. Some of the support that help children may be also be as effective for adults, but their life situation may, diff may be different and may have changed, regardless of what it may be. Rather than navigating through the classroom, as we know, with the dyslexic adults, however, they'll have to navigate through the workplace of where they're working and try to create a balance realm where it is, you know, to make for what would work for them, as well as maybe, you know, revolt navigating through the community, how to best fit into the society, as well as just the daily living with dyslexia, even though we know for a fact it's a given how we go about living our life with this, you know, and how people may accept us as a whole. So this is all about adapting and coping for dyslexia adults part one or method one. I'll just call it part one. So number one of this for you is to follow through is maybe present written information in an accessible format. What I mean here is just because dyslexia and maybe any other form of learning disorders or what have you that we have is an invisible disability or mental health disorder here on it. You may not know whether your co-workers, peers, supervisors or employees are dyslexic as well as someone said to me today. Best practice encourages the use of accessible design at all times. Justified text is difficult to read for many dyslexic adults as it creates uneven spaces between letters and words. Use left online text rather than just justified text for better accessibility for that particular person that is dyslexic. Number two, ask the person with dyslexia what he or she needs. Just because dyslexia affects everyone in different ways, your best information will come from the dyslexic person themselves. However, for some people, reading maps is the most difficult challenge. For others, any problem requiring shifting between numbers and words is hard enough for them. Don't assume that you know what's the best for the dyslexic adult, however. The person may not want or need your help at all times. Some of them may be able to do things on their own accord until they actually do ask for help if they do stumble on something as a challenge for them or a difficulty for them, regardless of what it may be. Believe you me, I've done that so many times, being afraid to ask for help when then I get into trouble for what how I do my way of living of doing it. But then again, you know, everyone's different how they do things. Make sure you're talking to the person privately and discreetly and respect the confidentiality of all what was said to you, however. This is a, goes for all people regardless of learning disabilities and the like because obviously we need to know who we can trust and that it's all about finding that common ground. Number three, provide a list of possible accommodations. What I mean here is basically like a, a proper list of the possible accommodations ahead of time will allow the dyslexic person to know what you're willing and be able to do to support them in their workplace or in the classroom regardless where they are at that given time. He or she can then select the options that are best for her or his or her own learning style. Typical of accommodations that may help include the following. Preferential setting, e.g. maybe for example for this case, sitting where he, she, he or she can hear, you know, see the board and read the teacher's face. Another one is number two, timed extensions. Many people may think just because, you know, some of the learning disability may ask for an extension, you know, to expand out more over time, thinks it's a bit unfair how we get treated. But then again, you've got to realise it's about a good way, give and take balance, I guess. You know, because for some dyslexics and some other learning disabilities, some people just procrastinate and leave things alone until the last minute and it just turns into a rightful mess as we know procrastination is a real bad thing which more of a piece later for that ADHD and procrastination how to actually overcome that and more will be there so that I forgot to add into my ADHD series. Number three for that is test modifications for example having someone read the test questions aloud for them many people may think that's a no-no but then again I, it's like I said, it's best what's given for that person at that time of need 
regardless in the workforce or in the classroom in test conditions. And I thought some tests were not supposed to be, you know, loud on the given when it comes down to it. You need to sit in silence for maybe two and a half hour, half, three hours when it comes down to our, you know, what you call it, our test. I, I remember that back in high school when I was doing some tests, some tests I'll actually ask them if I can go into a separate classroom sort of thing and hopefully I can sit there either A with a bit of distraction from mu for music on my own accord because I like to distract myself a bit with that so it helps me to think better but then again you know every teacher will have to learn what best accommodate for people's learning styles and needs so to speak. Anyway um, another one is number four pre-highlighted text box. Some textbooks may be pre-highlighted or not, but sometimes a bit of highlighting the diagrams, as I said before, with some learning disability. Some are like tactile learners, some are visual, some are, you know, hands-on. Well, I think tactile is hands-on, but, you know, in a given, you got to just, I love that, maybe. Another one is a computer-aided instruction. Some... Some dyslexics that I know of, which is going to be more in the piece about, you know, making use of technology, they have certain, you know, as we know today, computers now have a text-to-speech kind of application software that will allow us to actually, you know, get it to type for us if we can and whatnot. But then again, I just find that text-to-speech for me a hard thing to actually get it that blooming word or whatever document open to actually speak because obviously it doesn't know my voice much obviously or the way I pronounce my words could be wrong I don't know but hey another one is document conversion such as audio support for printed materials some materials should be audio formatted and that to allow for people that are listeners and can you know do it that way maybe another as another tip there is having a note taker, lab or library assistant, depending on where you are at that time, basically. I remember back in the days I had a note taker that helped me quite quite a thing. I mean, we compare notes afterwards and anything I miss on the daily, I'll have, you know, also beside me a little tape recorder. I found that easier for me to learn, have something, you know, by hearing as well as, you know, picking up anything I missed on that. So many learning aid tools I've used was of use for me as well as all these other learning techniques that I did highlighting words you know drawing diagrams flowcharts and the works worked for me but like I said everyone's different in their learning style but anyway back to that individual accommodations may be not listed above however okay in order to receive official accommodations through like basically the American versus the New Zealand you know, the Disability Act and the Workplace or University Season. For example, the dyslexic person must have had a recent combination of dis disability, as we know. Sometimes I think it refers to here too in New Zealand. Bear with me, I can't recall. So if anyone that's from New Zealand that watches my videos, please confirm below before I make an error of this. I've been trying to find out myself. I can't find it anywhere. However, an official confirmation of disability can be expensive and time consuming, as we not all know. If you're trying to help a dyslexic adult, be aware that there are many modifications that you make on your own accord. Number four, recognize that the dyslexic adult may be aware of his diagnosis. If he was not diagnosed in childhood, the adult may be unaware of his own learning style. He may never have been diagnosed with dyslexia. Yeah, this learning disability affects their everyday life, excuse me. You can help them by talking to him or her regarding the possibility of learning more about the condition and steps he might take to help him or herself. If he chooses not to pursue diagnosis or support options, respect their choice, however. Do not force the issue that they should actually go to a doctor, psychiatrist or whatever to actually get that diagnosis. You know, if they want to be on their own and do it on their own accord and you are there, you just got to... Thing. It's, it's just like I said, a matter of courtesy of, you know, respecting one another. Number five, protect the privacy of a person's diagnosis. If you're an employer or a teacher, you're legally responsible for maintaining the confidentiality of your employee or student's disability status. If a student comes to you asking for accommodations, his or her particular di diagnosis will not be likely to be found on the page qualification for this, her, for your services that you may provide, be it whatever it may be. Okay, because of the stigma associated with learning disabilities and other like mental health disorders, as I mentioned earlier, it's important to 
making sure that the other person's diagnosis is kept confidential at all times unless they choose to open up and share it with you based on their trust in that. The person who him or herself can choose to disclose their disability if they if so desire and then tell you how it affects their way of living and whatnot. Part two, okay, before I end this, is adapting printed material for dyslexia process. Use dyslexia friendly form. Plain, sensitive serif, evenly spaced fonts such as Arial to Homer, Helvetica, Geneva, Century Golf, the country bucket are all easier for dyslexic person to read than other fonts. <coughs> While some other dyslexic people may find larger fonts easier to read, most prefer 12 to 14 size. It's again on the given, depending on the person. Avoid using serif fonts such as Times New Roman, such as serifs, blur the shapes of letters, making it harder for them to read, obviously. Don't use italics to emphasize information as this can result in all words appearing light and harder to read. Instead, so make emphasis clearly through bolding your font. If it's something important, bold it at all times. Or highlight it, as I mentioned before. Number two, avoid visual distortion for dyslexic readers. If you're a blogger, a teacher, or an employer, you can make a few simple changes to avoid causing visual distraction, such as word blurring or paling. What I mean is here, for example, the washout effect. These changes are likely to benefit your standard readers as well as those with dyslexia. For example, long blocks of unbroken text aren't easy for most people to read, but they're virtually impossible for dyslexic readers. Use short paragraphs instead of instead of limiting each paragraphs to just one idea. You can also divide up long stretches of text with headlines or section titles that will summarize the topic in each of those sections. Avoid plain white background as it can make the font harder to focus on. Dark colour text on light coloured backgrounds is easy to read. However, bear in mind avoid maybe the colours of green, red or pink fonts as these are likely to be harder for most dyslexics to read. Number three, select paper that is optimal for reading. Make sure your paper is thick enough so that you cannot see the other printed side through the page. Use matte paper if, if possible rather than the glossy one, which can reflect the light and contribute to visual stretch. Avoid digital print processing, which can result in a shiny finish. Experiment with different colour paper to find the shade that the dyslexic like person is most able to read this going on. Number four, provide clearly written directions. Avoid lengthy detailed explanations, use short sentences written on a direct zone and be con concise. Try not to use acronyms or overlay technical language. Where possible, include visual diagrams, pictures, and flowcharts. Use lots of bullet points if need be, or number lists rather than just done deep paragraphs. Well, basically, that's the first part of the coping and whatnot of the dyslexia, how to help a dyslexic adult. Give me a like, full thumbs up for support, for engagement. Feel free to comment if I missed anything below, as I said before. Feel free if anyone is from New Zealand that I have mentioned before about the part of the, you know, New Zealand versus American Disability Act, whatever it was that we need to accommodate for our needs. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, as me answer. Feel free to basically also just subscribe to my channel on a daily weekly basis because obviously, you know, hopefully once everything goes back to normal, I'll be able to share more of these videos and more. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends. So, and all for the dough, guys. Do what you love, love what you do. Until next time, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for the support.